Good morning, St. John, and all those that are listening with us. It's a great day to be alive and a great day that the Lord has made. We thank you so much for staying with us, even though we had some technical difficulties. We thank God for the opportunity to come to you and greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Certainly, as we uh, celebrate Clergy Appreciation Month, Reverend Jones wanted to let me let you know that he thanks you for all the great gifts that you gave him. And I certainly want to thank you for all of the great gifts that you gave me, as well as the First Lady, Mrs. Tate, on last week. 18 years, 18 years together as church and pastor. We thank, thank you so much for everything. Now we start our worship service. We're going to have Mr. Henry Harris start out by playing Let the Church Say Amen. God some praise right there where you are this morning. I'm going to be reading in your hearing this morning from the book of Philippians, a New Testament scripture text, in that second chapter, starting at the first verse. Therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, Fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. Let nothing be done through selfish amb ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interest, but also for the interest of others. Let this mind in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above all names, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth, and that every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. Do all things without complaining and disputing, that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generations among whom you shine as a light of the world. May the Lord add a blessing to his already blessed word this morning. We come to you today thanking God for all that he's doing in our lives. We are here to celebrate Jesus Christ today, the reason that we are here, the good news, the gospel. 
We're so used to hearing bad news, but the good news is Jesus Christ died for all of us. May I pray? God, we come today to say thank you. God, today is a new day that you've given us. God, we didn't ask you for the day. You gave it to us, and we say thank you. God, as we slept last night, you encamped your mighty angels around us. As we slept in slumber, you let no hurt, harm, or danger come near us, God. Thank you. God, you woke us up. You woke us up, God, with a sound mind. You woke us up, Father God, giving us a new opportunity to make a difference in your kingdom. Today we come to say thank you. God, we thank you for this branch of Zion here at St. John Baptist Church that we come to give you praise and glory and honor because we honor you first place in our lives. God, we come to seek you first because we realize, God, that we, we need to place you first place in everything that we do. And today, God, is a day that you made. So, God, we're going to rejoice today. God, bless those under the sound of my voice right now. Allow them to draw just a little closer to you, God. Allow them to realize that the blood of Jesus covers a multitude of our sins and that the blood of Jesus, God, gives us an opportunity to love each other and to love you. God, today as we go, as we get ready to go into an election season, God, we thank you that the government is on the shoulders of Christ. And today, God, we thank you that, that you have already chosen the next president. But God, as we go to the polls, allow us to, God, seek you first for answers. Because, God, you already know. And we thank you for the revelation that you've given us. Bless our manservant today that's going to break the bread of life. Allow him to speak, God, with boldness and clarity, proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ. And we give you the seeds. Some fell on the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil, where it produced a crop a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. Whoever has ears, let them hear. Whoever has ears, let them hear. Good seed. Good seed. Good seed. Good seed. And Jesus lets us know that the seed that we're talking about that is being spread is actually the word of God, good seed. Now, ever since we have been out and being in the field and having to drive in services, um, every Sunday it seems like at one point, point or the other, uh, Red Ball will begin to play a song about two sons from Shirley Caesar. So we will go with that on this morning. And there were two sons, and there was a mother who had those two sons. One son did everything that his mother wanted him to do. He was everything that his mother wanted. He was possibly considered to be the good seed. He told his mother that one day he wanted to be somebody, that he was going to college. The other son was in trouble all of the time. He was possibly considered the bad seed. The mother was in and out of court trying to keep that son out of uh, juvenile and then after a while out of jail and then after a while out of prison. To make a long story short, one son, that son left home early and went about his way, but the good son went to college and then he went to medical school. He wanted to be someone. He married a lady from school and, and he came back home, picked up his mother and told his mother after eight years, at eight years while his mother was working, while his mother was scrubbing floors to make sure that boy would go through school and then through medical school, eight years while that, that mother took in extra laundry, extra clothes after she did windows, after she cleaned people's houses. Eight years later, he came back home with a wife and told his mother to 
come and be with him and his wife and help raise their children. After the children uh, had some size on them, the lady he married was a school teacher and told the, the uh, good so-called good son that his mother was now getting in the way, that she used this bad English and that she uh, doesn't do the right thing. Uh, she said that sometimes when they have company that she's embarrassed because the mother is praying and she's moaning out and praying to God and moaning and groaning and groaning in the spirit. And she told this young man that he needed to carry his mother to a rest home. And so the son went and told his mother that he was going to carry her to a rest home. And he said, Mama, I'm going to make sure everything is straight for you. And the mother said not a word. She just began to pack her clothes. And the next day, she got into the car. And as she was getting in the car, uh, uh, the devil began to speak to her and tell her, listen, all that you've done for that son, and look what, how he treats you. He, she got in the car, and she was on the way to the rest home when they looked and saw this old ragtag car coming up the street. There she recognized the son, the other son. He, they stopped the cars, and both of them got out and greeted one another. And after greeting one another, the, the so-called bad son asked the good son, where are you taking my mama? And she, he began to go through the fact that she doesn't use good English and she moans and groans while she's praying and they want their children to be raised and to have the right things and to be raised the right way. And, and so the, the so-called bad son went to his mother and said, Mother, I wanted to tell you that last night I went to a storefront church and I got the Holy Spirit. The Holy Ghost came down on me and I'm not going to do any of the things that I used to do anymore. He told his mother, he said, look, I don't have a big mansion like my brother does. But mother, you're welcome to come back home with me. I, 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 I don't have steak. I don't eat steak every night. Sometimes I eat beans and sometimes out of the can. But mother, if you want to, if you will, please come home with me. And you know that old mother got out of the car, that great limousine, and went and went and went, sat in with that old son that was supposed to be the bad seed, but he was the good seed. And the reason that he was the good seed was that he finally allowed himself to accept Jesus Christ as his Lord and his Savior. Both boys were good. Both one was bad, the other was supposedly good, but none of them had the Holy Spirit. None of them had accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. But when that son accepted Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior, that good seed began to speak to him and direct his path. Yes, there is, there are people in the world that have bad seeds. There are bad seeds within the world, but there's good news that there is good seed within this world. Anyone and everyone can have and really does have good seed. Because good seed is none other than the word of God. And what can be said negatively about the word of God? Nothing, nothing in the world can be said negatively about the word of God. For in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. Remember the scriptures, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty darkness was over the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters, and God said, let there be light. And when he spoke that word, let there be light, the word then became uh, active.
activated and the word went out and created the light. So in the beginning was the word, the word was with God and the word was God. All things were created by him and nothing was created that has been created. In him was life, and the life was the light of men and women, the same light that light of everyone who comes in the world. There's nothing wrong with the seed. There's nothing wrong with the word of God, for each and every person has been touched and created by the word of God. And so since each and every person has been created and touched by the word of God. We recognize and we realize that there's nothing wrong with the word of God. They tell me that heaven and earth will pass away, but his word will not pass away. The grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of our God will last forever. The word became forever flesh and dwelt among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son who came from the father full of grace and truth. There's nothing wrong with the word. The problem comes with the response to the word of God that is perfect. Nothing wrong with the word. Nothing wrong with the seed. It's the response to the word and the response to the seed. The seed we see, Jesus say, some fell by the wayside. Some fell on rocky ground. Some fell on uh, weedy ground, uh, ground with thorns. Some fell on good ground. And, and my understanding of this when I be began my ministry was these were these these states of being were finite. In other words, if you were if, the, if if you were on the wayside, you stayed that way. If you were rocky, you stayed that way. If you were weedy or thorny, you stayed that way. But these states of being are not finite. They are fluent. Just because somebody is rocky now doesn't mean they will be rocky forever. Just because somebody is on the wayside now doesn't mean that they will be on the wayside forever. Just because somebody has thorns on them now doesn't mean that they will have thorns forever. For if this was the case, none of us, you nor myself, would be here. Seasons come and go, and the seeds by the wayside get replanted. The rocky road gets deepened. The, the, the stony ground gets cleared. We all have another chance. He told them things in, in verse 3. He told them things in, in parables. A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell by the path, and the birds came and ate it up. The interpretation of this is in verse 18. He says, listen then to what the parable of the soul means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one, Satan, comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. This is the seed uh, along the path, along the wayside. Sometimes the word falls on the wayside and people just don't understand. I told the story many times. There was a, a person that uh, worked in a factory and there was a new plan that was coming up that was going to benefit everyone. New, they were going get, to get a lot of good health benefits from this plan and old Joe wouldn't sign it. So everyone tried to get him to sign it. Uh, his co-workers tried to get him to sign it. Even his wife tried to get him to sign it. But Joe stood still because he said, I am, I have, uh, I, I, I'm satisfied with the plan that I have. His managers tried to get him to sign it. He wouldn't go to his manager. So the head manager, the head boss, called Joe into the office and said to him, we need you to sign this because it's gonna be, we, need, we need it to be 
in order for it to go in force for everyone. And Joe said he wasn't going to sign it. And so the manager, the boss said, well, since you're not going to sign it, uh, then we have to let you go. We have to fire you. Joe took out his pen and signed the page. Everyone came to Joe and asked him why, uh, why he wouldn't sign it before, but then sign it when the boss man asked him. He said, nobody explained it to me like he did. In other words, my brothers and sisters, many times we try to tell people about the word of God, but then we don't explain it <laughs> like it needs to be explained. We need to let people know that there's a heaven to gain and there's a hell to get away from. We need to let people know that God is good all of the time and all of the time. God is good. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow, but when the sun came out, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. In the, in the 20th verse, it's, it's interpreted, the seed falling on rocky grounds refers to someone who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only for a little while. And when trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. Many times people are told that if you follow Jesus, that everything will be all right, that every day will be sunshine, that, that you will have no problems, no situations. And I'm here to tell you that is an untrue, that is a lie because of the fact that if you walk with the Lord, there are some times that you're going to be good, to have good times. There are some times that you're going to have bad times. There are ups and there are downs. There are hills to climb and there are valleys. What we have with Jesus is the fact that no matter what comes our way, we still have God with us to go through those things with us to get us on the other side. There is something else on the other side of through. Out of Hebrews, it tells us that therefore, brethren, have boldness to enter the holiness by the blood of Jesus by a new and living way, which he consecrated for us through the veil that is his flesh. And having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full acceptance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure waters. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. Hold on just a little while longer. Hold on and don't let anyone take you or turn you away from your faith. Other seed fell among thorns. When they grew up, they choked the plants. And verse 22 tells us the interpretation. The seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. It's not saying that, that, that wealth is the only thing that can make things unfruitful. It is not saying that, that, that just the cares of the world can make things unfruitful. They can and they will if we let it. Jesus gives us a key. Jesus gives us an answer. In Matthew 6, 31, he says, So do not worry, saying what we shall eat or what we shall drink, or what we shall wear. For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things will be given unto you. Still others. See, fell on good soil, where it produced a crop 160 or 30 times what was sown. Whoever has ears, let, it, let them hear. 
Verse 23, but the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word. Not only hears the word, but understands the word. This is the one who produces a crop yielding 160 or 30 times what was sown. What is then those that have the good seed? Those that have the good seed are just like the one in Psalm 1 that says, Blessed is the one who walks not in the steps of the ungodly, but stand in the way, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is the law of the Lord, and in it he meditates on this law day and night. That person the good seed is like a tree planted by the streams of water which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatsoever they do, they prosper. I thank God, I thank God, I thank God that God has allowed us to have the good seed and it's up to us to open ourselves so that we might be able to take in this good seed and that we might be able to be good ground, that we might be able to be good soil and not only keep the seed, but grow the seed, not only keep the seed, but talk about the seed, not only keep the seed, but be good soil that produces 30 times, 60 times, 100 times over what has been given. Amen. 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 Let the church say amen. amen. We open the doors of the church if there's anyone here that doesn't know that anybody out there that does not know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, certainly we ask that you would come. At this time, we're going to have one more selection by Mr. Henry Harris. Now may God the Father, God the Son, God the Blessed Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide in our hearts and give us peace, love, and joy this day henceforth and forevermore. Let us all say amen. 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 God bless you. Go in peace.